Thursday evening in the French capital. It is day 12 of Roland Garros and we have this continued theme of sunshine, blue skies and top class tennis. Hello and welcome to Night and Day at Roland Garros. It's lovely to have your company once again. And here for you is what we have for you on this evening's show. Mukova wins titanic tussle to reach maiden Grand Slam final. The mixed doubles champions at Roland Garros 2023 are crowned. And it's the match everyone wants to see. We'll look ahead to the men's semi-finals. So a busy show ahead of us. And we weren't sure at the start of the day if we would have live tennis because it's just gone 8 o'clock in the evening local time. But after three hour, 13 minute first semi-final, we do have live action. We're going to get to it shortly. Before we do here on Philip Chetri, we thought you would like a little bit of the story of the game. So the story so far between Igor Sviontek, who is a defending champion, and she's the world number one, taking on the Brazilian Beatrice Hadach Maia. Now, in the first couple of games, there was a break of peace, an early break for the Brazilian. The pole was able to strike straight back before they settled into this contest. The second meeting between the two, they met on the hard courts of Toronto last year, and Sviontek was able to get in her groove and just put too much pressure on the Brazilian, who is swinging big. And she has spent over 13 hours on court, Hadach Maia, coming into this match. Sviontek has not dropped a set. She has barely been pushed as she looks for her third Roland Garros final. So it was a set, an accountable set in the end for Iga Sviontek, closing it out by six games to two. So that is the story of the match. If we cross to Philippe Chetri, where this semi-final continues, there's been a little twist. I mentioned that Iga Sviontek hasn't dropped a set through the course of this tournament. Well, early stages of the second set, there was a break for Hadaj Maia, but the difference was in the second set is that the Brazilian was able to consolidate the break, something she wasn't able to do in the first set. Remembering, Sviontek hasn't been pushed to the point of dropping a set, and Beatrice had Meyer, she's come back from a set down in her last three matches. There's a wonderful atmosphere. There's a big group of Brazilians. There's a big group of Poles. And it's turning into a tantalizing battle between the two. Maybe it will go the difference. distance. As I mentioned, it's gone past 8 o'clock in the evening. And Iga Sviontek looking for her fourth Grand Slam final. She's already got three Grand Slam titles, two of them here at Roland Garros for Beatrice Hadach Maia. This is new territory. It's her first Grand Slam semi-final. Been an incredible tournament. But Iga Sviontek keeping it to just the one break of serve. And it's a match we are going to keep a close eye on throughout the course of this show. And I can hear the band in the background. They've been here from first ball and they will be here until last. And they were in their seats earlier in the day for the first of the semi finals. Now, this was between Karolina Mukova, the Czech player who came in at 43 in the world rankings, and the Australian Open champion and world number two, Arena Sabalenka. Now, this was, this was an incredible match that would unfold. And this first set would go over the hour mark. Sabalenka actually had break points in the fourth game, but she couldn't convert. But she was able to assert herself a little bit later. Now, this is a second meeting between the two, but they haven't met since 2019. So it's really hard to look at that and to try and put some context on that. Because since then, Irina Sabalenka has become a Grand Slam champion and Karolina Mukova has finally shrugged off the injuries. The backhand line from Karolina Mukova was absolutely on fire in this match. She's got such court craft and skill, and she was able to close out the first set. And there's an amazing stat that before this semi-final, 13 of the last 14 women's semi-finals here had been won by the player who'd taken the first set. But Arena Sabalenka was not done yet. In the second set, she was able to fight back. Now, they traded breaks after Mukova actually went two love up in the main body of the set. But Arena Sabalenka was able to cut down the errors, move Mukova around, find the gaps, and take this the distance. Into the third set, and Karolina Mukova would find herself 2-5 down to Arena Sabalenka. Arena Sabalenka knowing that should she win this, get to the final, go on better than Iga Sviontek, she could end the tournament as the world number one. There were some blistering rallies between these two players. I cannot emphasize enough just how good the quality of tennis was that was on show between Karolina Mukova, whose live ranking had shot up to 19 going into this, finally playing injury-free. And Arena Sabalenka, who said the pressure has eased so much with the title in Australia. But Arena Sabalenka 
got herself in all sorts of bother. Carolina Mukova was able to step up, coming forward so many times, reading the drop shot of Arena Sabalenka. And then for the Czech player, looking for her first Grand Slam final, and so it would be. Fifth year in a row, the Roland Garros finalist is a first time Grand Slam finalist. Look over the third player ranked outside the top 40 to reach the Roland Garros final. She has an all court game. It's an absolute pleasure to watch. Live rankings. She's now the world number 60. So many injuries have plagued her career. Look at the delight on her face. She looks so at home out there. It was an absolute pleasure to watch. Now, very shortly, we will get the thoughts in the press conference for Marina Sabalenka, but the applause is for that young lady there who spoke on court after the win. I don't really know what happened. Uh, you know, the atmosphere, the people are just pushing me all the matches. It's, it's unbelievable. I, I just try to keep fighting and it worked. I, I really don't know what happened. I'm, I'm so happy. The match was, you were winning, 7-6-2 love, then it turned, then it turned again. And you haven't played that many big matches in, in big tournaments. How did you get used to that? Because that's complicated. Just look around. It's it's pretty easy here with uh, on this beautiful stadium with so many people watching. And I would repeat myself again. It's it it, it goes just nice with with everyone. You know I thank you. It's I go for the towel and people there cheering on me on both sides. I hear my name. It's uh, it's incredible <laughs> feeling. Tough match. Uh, she played, yeah, she played unbelievable tennis, and still I, ha I had a lot of opportunities and I didn't use it. And yeah, of course, I'm very disappointed with this tough loss, but that's okay. It was a tough one for Arena Sabalenka, who had opportunities to close out the match and reach her first Roland Garros final. As it is, it will be Karolina Mukova who takes to the stage on Saturday afternoon. The question is, who is she going to face? Is it going to be the defending champion, the world number one, Iga Świątek, or is it going to be the Brazilian Beatrice Hedach Mai, who is looking to hold on to this break? It's such a precious break. The Brazilian, the first Brazilian woman to reach a Grand Slam semi-final since Maria Bueno at the US Open in 1968. She is rewriting history. She's been such a fighter through the course of this tournament, but you're always under pressure when you're taking on Iga Świątek, who's in her fifth Grand Come Slam semi-final, a two-time winner of Roland Garros. She also picked up the US Open crown in 2022. And when it comes to Grand Slam matches, since she has been the world number one, Iga Świątek has won 24 and she has lost just two. They are frightening statistics that Iga Świątek has, looking to get us back on serve in this second set. Remember, she is yet to drop a set. Beatrice Hedach Meyer. Finally transforming the league form that she's got a lot of points to defend coming up on the grass, but finally translating that to the Grand Slam stage. But this is a very, very tough test against Svjontek, who is so at home on this surface. And this was a break point opportunity for Svjontek. It comes off the error of the Brazilian, and that would level us up in the midway point of the second Quite set with Iga Svjontek. You heard there three games all, but Iga Svjontek leading by a set to love. Well, I think there was the Star Wars theme being played by the band in the background. There's so much going on on Philippe Chatrier at the moment. Now we do have champions crowned here at Roland Garros for 2023 because the first match on Philippe Chatrier was the mixed doubles final being contested between the unseeded pairings of Miyu Kato and Tim Putz and Bianca Andreescu and Michael Venus. Now, after a shaky start, Andreescu and Venus would take the first set. There were some errors off the Venus racket at the very early stages, but a really good fight back from Kato and Puts, who met at the mixed double sign-in, would you believe? And they would go on to take the deciding champions tie break to be crowned Grand Slam champions. For Andreescu, so many positives. This was her first mixed doubles event. She said she's going to play more in the future because she really enjoyed it. Michael Venus, a former winner here, but they are your champions. Miyu Ketu and Tim Putz, mixed doubles champions. 2023 Roland Garros.
and they stayed on Philippe Chetre for a good while afterwards, signing autographs and taking selfies. So congratulations to them. While that was playing out, over on court, Simone Matti, the men's doubles final was being pieced together. We're going to go in order of the matches. And first into the final were the fourth seeds of Ivan Dodig and Austin Krychek. And this was a rematch of last year's semi-final against Granayas and Zabayos with the same result. Sure, Dodig match. and Krychek into their second Roland Garros final together. The consecutive finals here in their fourth final this year that's resulted in two titles. So a second Grand Slam final for Krychek on the right, a fifth for Dodig, who won the title here in 2015. Now, in tomorrow's final, they will face the unseeded pair from Belgium, Sander Gilles and Joran Vliegen, who came through in straight sets against the Twelsies, Middlecoop and Mies. It is a first Grand Slam final for the Belgians. Look at that hug at the end. One of these pairings will be crowned Roland Garros men's doubles champions by the end of the week. So really well done to them coming through, getting the wins, defeating seeds along the way and booking their place in the final. So the men's doubles final is set. We've had the mixed doubles champions crowned. Next up, and it doesn't get any easier. It doesn't matter that there are fewer matches, but when it comes to picking the standout moment, point or shot of the day, it's really tricky. But here is the one we've got for you today. Now, ahead of tomorrow's men's semi-finals, we decided to dedicate this evening's Never Have I Ever to one man. Thank you, Grand Slams. I'm sorry. Uh, I have. Yeah, Noll is... I guess the most common one. I have a few others, you know, Joker or Joko or something like that, but uh, Nolly is probably the most common. Tom Balabomba, you know, we used to remember him and, and, and cheer for him. And when I met him first time, actually it was in my country, he came over. <laughs> Very emotional experience for me. And of course, meeting Pete Sampras there. My third childhood idol was Michael Jordan in sports. So I still haven't met him, but uh, I will probably be very starstruck <laughs> if I do. Regifted a gift? I have. Mm -hmm. Privileged to receive a lot of gifts uh, from amazing, amazing fans around the world, uh, especially in China. And yes, I do admit that I have regifted some gifts. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I have to be honest in this one. I have never had a tattoo. Would you ever have a tattoo? Uh, I, I say at the moment, you know, you, know, you never know, but I really, I don't think it's. Uh, I'm just not that kind of a guy. I don't, you know, just leaving an ink for permanently on my skin. I just <laughs> don't like that feeling. If I ever wanted to go not, to practice. Not wanted to go to practice. Oh, I have. Only one person said they never had that feeling out of everyone we've spoken to. So oh, really? Yeah, OK. Only one person, that is the common answer. All right. So OK, good. And finally, never have Wait, let me guess who that person okay. is. Right. Andrei Rublev. No. Dominic Thiem. Rafael Nadal. <laughs> <laughs> Who else? Casper okay. Ruud. No. Um, he said yes today. Benoit Pair. Yeah. It's okay. French. I'm mean, a French, a French player. Guy Monfils. No. <laughs> I don't know. Hugo Umber. Hugo Umber. Yeah. Wow. So he's never had that feeling ever. No. Chapeau. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. We thought you'd enjoy seeing all of Novak Djokovic's answers put together. And if you've missed any of the Never Have I Ever series, you can find them via the official Roland Garros social media channels. To those semi-finals very shortly, but firstly, back to the action that's taking place on Philippe Chiatri. We know that Karolina Mukova is in Saturday's final, but who will she face? It is one of Iga Sviantek or Beatrice Hadach Meyer, a second meeting between the two. And a short while ago, Sviantek was able to get the 
break back as she was a breakdown. For the first time, though, Hadachmai was able to consolidate a break, but it wasn't long before Schwantek was able to level things up once more. Schwantek is looking to be the youngest woman to reach three Roland Garros finals since Monica Seles did it between 1990 and 1992, and she's also looking for her ninth clay court final. It's truly astonishing the numbers that she's racking up. And remember, during the tournament, she just turned 22. So frustration on the face of Beatrice Haddad Meyer. Uh, Shiontek looking just to nudge ahead and have the scoreboard lead. Remember, she's got that first set in the bag. She's looking to become the first woman to reach back-to-back -back Roland Garros finals since Simona Halep did it in 2017 and 2018. And she's getting herself in a very good position, that constant pressure, keeping the place on the baseline. The movement, the natural movement of Shiontek around these clay courts, the big hitting of Beatrice Hadash by the frustration that it keeps coming back off the racket of Shiontek, who's absolutely everywhere. And just wanting to get her nose in front because then she can apply pressure onto the Brazilian. An apology from Sviontek. Frustration and disappointment. We are still on serve and hopefully we'll have another look in before the end of the show. So 4 3 on serve in the second, Sviontek by a set to love. Now we heard from Novak Djokovic in his Never Have I Ever series. Tomorrow he'll be taken to the court in the first of the semi-finals so this is not before 2.45 in the afternoon. He's up against the world number one Carlos Alcaraz. Now we're not going to show Carlos Alcaraz training because he didn't train today. He wasn't training at Roland Garros he wasn't training across the road at Jean Bois but the two-time champion Novak Djokovic was. He was out on court five. You'll know the numbers by now. Looking for a 23rd Grand Slam title. He's looking for a possible return to the number one ranking and he's also looking for a seventh final in his past to eight majors. This is, and Carlos Alcaraz spoke about this, and he said, this guy is amazing. It's his 45th Grand Slam semi-final, and he's dropped just the one set to get to the semi-final stage. But when it comes to the head-to-head, -head, although they've only played once before, it is worth us taking a closer look at the two when it comes to their head-to-head. We both are playing a great level. I'm really looking for that match. And of course, for me, it's amazing to uh, make history. Definitely the biggest challenge for me, you know, so far in the tournament. And he's definitely a guy to beat here. So I'm looking forward to that. If you want to be the best, you have to beat the best. That was circled in the draw as soon as the draw was made and it's come to pass. We cannot wait for that semi-final tomorrow. So that is a not before 2.45 start. It will be followed by, I think it's a not before 5.30, but I think the time they're going to take, it will be followed by Sasha Zverev against Kasper Ruud. Now, Kasper Ruud is the fourth seed. He's the finalist from last year. He was practicing over on court four today and he had a great win, didn't he, against Holger Rune in the quarterfinals. A lot of people tipping Rune to come out on top because he'd won their last meeting in Rome but it, it does feel that Rude is peaking at just the right time now 16 wins on the clay in 2023 together with the Estoril title it also feels like he's got unfinished business after losing in the final to Rafa Nadal last year and I think the same could be said for Sasha Zverev because he had that horrific ankle injury when he said in his words he was playing the best tennis of his life in that semi-final against Nadal last year it kept him out for the rest of the season a third Roland Garros semi-final a sixth Grand Slam semi-final the former number two he was training over at Jean Bois a little bit earlier and when it comes to Rude and Zverev we've got a little bit more to look at so here for you a closer look at their head-to-head yeah, I think we will both just try to enjoy the moment. So we're going to give it all and we're going to be ready to hopefully put on a good uh, good match. We're in the semis. Um, it's nothing more, nothing less.
of your order of play for tomorrow. It is Friday at Roland Garros. This is the business end of the competition and tomorrow is men's semi-final day. But the action on Philippe Chetre starts at 11 o'clock. Look at those people in the deck chairs. Isn't that a lovely way to spend your Thursday evening? Now we start with the top seeds of the women's wheelchair doubles event. That's the semi-final stage and there's going to be a wonderful atmosphere as they take on a French pair. Then from 2.45, Alcaraz against Djokovic, second meeting. Alcaraz won the meeting last year in Madrid at the semi-final stage. And then Rude against Rev, a fourth meeting. All on the hard courts they played. This is a first at a Grand Slam, and it is a first on clay. I think you've got to say, if you're in one of those chairs, I'd stay in one of those chairs, because I think tomorrow is going to be a long but enjoyable and exciting day, as by the end of it, we're going to have our men's final lineup. Now, before we go this evening, let's just check back in with events on Philippe Chatry because they are continuing. It's coming up to 8.30 in the evening, and Iga Svantec once again trying to put the pressure on Beatrice Hadach. My has not dropped a set. Svantec, she'll like to keep that going. But what we've seen from the Brazilian She's a fighter, she is a grafter. Coming up to, what, 14 or so hours on court throughout the course of the tournament. And in her first Grand Slam semi-final, but Shiontek's so experienced. I actually saw Shiontek over in the, the TV compound during the first semi-final, finishing off a couple of things. And that roar from the Brazilian, her fans are there. Very important stages, a four-all in the second set. Shiontek leading by a set to love. If you'd like to see how that concludes, then right now we have ball-by-ball -ball commentary on Radio Roland Garros. You can find that via the website, or if you have the Roland Garros app, which you should do, then it, I think it's the top left corner. You click on that and you'll get ball by ball commentary. We'll be rounding up everything at the same time tomorrow night. We'll be looking back at the men's semi-final action and we'll be getting ready for the 2023 Roland Garros women's singles final. So I really hope you can join us at the same time again tomorrow. Bye for now.